Okay, I'll go ahead and start it off. We asked all the players about, you know, the possibility of the empty arena thing. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you approach that as a coach? First thing, safety aspect and then just the, the whole weirdness of, of maybe that could actually happen. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's uh, a lot of that's out of our control. Um, you know, it's a complicated situation where, you know, there's so many facts still being gathered. Obviously, our fans mean so much to us, but, you know, it definitely would be a weird feeling. But, you know, if that time comes, we'll cross that bridge when that happens. What, what have the conversations been like kind of in the locker room just with you talking to the players and obviously keeping a focus on the season, but just being aware of just, you know, being precautious, taking safety and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, guys have been very receptive. I think we found the right times with our medical staff, obviously our, our media team, um, to talk about what's going up, going on. I mean, these guys are gathering the information every day in their own media sources and uh, their own, you know, daily lives and stuff. But we're trying to educate them as much as possible. You know, there's rapid new information coming every single day. At the end of the day, just the health and the safety, you know, regardless of the situation, obviously is paramount to us um, on an everyday basis. So continuing to make them educated, taking the right precautions, um, you know, making sure everyone's healthy. John say Porter hasn't been here long, but um, I guess one, uh, what could he potentially bring to this team? And uh, two, what have your initial conversations been with him, um, you know, just as far as his journey here and uh, where he, what he feels he can bring to this team? Yeah, I mean, it's been great uh, last couple of days getting to know John Tay, getting him mixed in with his teammates, obviously the coaching staff, our medical team, obviously getting him back fully healthy and um, back on the floor, you know, as, as we develop a plan for him. But, you know, when we talk about when we bring people, players in this organization, he's a great competitor, did that in Mizzou, um, high basketball IQ. Uh, he's got skill sets that fit us on both ends of the floor. Um, obviously, someone that we look forward to working with and developing, you know, getting him healthy first, but getting him in the fold as soon as we can, you know, not missing any steps. But I know he's super excited. Um, you know, guys are excited to have him in the fold. And, you know, this is a, a player that hopefully we can have with our mix, you know, moving forward into the future. Right here. Is there a timetable on when you want to get Justice on the court and actually get him running around with the guys? And also, what about Jaron and his? Uh... Sure. I mean, uh, both of those guys, obviously, we, we made the statement yesterday, you know, hopefully sometime within this next week. Um, you know, we're limited on practice time, so we're getting those guys five on five sessions when we can with coaches and a couple of the other players, um, you know, uh, you know, some sided games here and there. So there's not a target game yet. We're taking it one day at a time, you know, kind of going through our process of making sure that they're really ready to return to play, um, you know, fully healthy. And then also making sure what they can do on the court in those five on five settings um, is appropriate to you know make that final call At some point, you know, in the next week. Say again, not tonight. Uh, not tonight. You mentioned getting John Tay Porter back on the floor. Obviously, he's not going to play for the Grizzlies this season, but what level of on-court work is he able to do right now? It's pretty pretty low intensity right now, more just, you know, spot shots, uh, very, very limited movement. Um, you know, we're still kind of wrapping our heads around what, you know, we want this plan to look like, obviously trusting our performance team uh, to develop that plan, you know, when he's with us. And, you know, a lot of the emphasis is going to be on just getting him stronger, um, you know, and uh, especially in the knee. And um, a lot of it's going to be probably more video-based, you know, conceptual based, him being around his teammates is going to be big enough. He'll, he'll be an observer. But, you know, he was in a drill today, you know, catching and shooting, you know, minimal movement. Um, but then over time, you know, there'll be a progression to how much more, you know, action he can do on the court. Coach, it's been several months since you, you guys have seen the magic. What, what have you seen from Markel Fultz when you watch him on tape, how he's grown since game nine to, to now? Uh, a lot of confidence um you know i think he's been an engine for them especially offensively they're playing really well on the offensive end the last couple of games uh sets a tone you know in transition you know with his drive game obviously got it's got a lot of force you know getting downhill um and then he's shooting the three ball with confidence you know um so it's expanding his game i think he's you know uh, still a young bright you know talent in this league uh, but he's really set a tone with them with the aggressiveness that he's playing with. Obviously, you got other guys. Vucevic draws a lot of attention, you know, Gordon. But those guys play with a lot of force. And I think just having him from the guard position really just makes him even more dynamic. Coach, offensively, over the last week and a half, the Magic's output has increased. Mm -hmm. uh, what are they doing well now, perhaps, that, you've, that uh, they've improved recently? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think they're shooting the three ball well. I think one, they're one of the league leaders, um, you know, last couple of games, shooting the three ball well, um, you know, but also I think they're effective field goals at a really high clip. So getting to the paint, as I just talked about, a lot of guys scoring in the paint, um, then shooting the three ball. I mean, I think they're continuing to, you know, 
play the same system. Obviously, a lot of emphasis on the post, you know, with Vucevic and Gordon. But Fultz's, you know, growth. You know, we didn't see Ross in the first game, so I know he's obviously a dynamic scorer coming off of the bench. But even you know the rest of the group, Michael Carter Williams, Ennis, and Wundu, those guys are playing with a lot of confidence. And when you're playing with confidence, you're naturally going to play a whole lot better. Coach, one last thing for me. What, given what you guys have coming up on the road so with some really tough matchups, how important is this game tonight here at home? I mean, every game is important for us. Um, you know, we always try to look at it. We never look past the next task at hand for us. So very important game, um, just like the previous games have been as well. So uh, our mentality is going out. You know, how are we going to just play our style of play, you know, live up to our habits and our standard? It's a great test as a team that, you know, smacked us pretty good in the fourth quarter the first time, even though it was so long ago. We know it's a, a really, you know, capable, good defensive team, a team that's also playing really well offensively. Um, you know, so uh, well Coach team, obviously, I'm a big fan of Coach Clifford, so it's going to be a great challenge, and we take every challenge to you know test how we are as a team um, each night. Taylor, I know you're not exactly sure when Justice will enter the fold over the next week, but how, what is the plan in terms of will you ease him in, or you you throw him into the water and see see if he swims? Like, how do you handle incorporating a guy who you think could be a a big focal point for the team, but doing it? you know, 60, 65 games into the season. Yeah, I mean, it's a, I think it's going to be a combination of both. We're obviously going to ease him in because it's been a while since he's played and, um, you know, uh, competitive live NBA basketball. It's been a while. But, you know, we're doing all the preparations that we can control to get him as prepared as possible so we can also throw him into the fire. So uh, kind of combination of both. Obviously working hand-in-hand -hand with our performance team as we've done all season long on all of our guys. Guys return to play, especially developing the best plan. Um, you know, obviously I would foresee him coming off the bench, you know, um, and – uh, feeling that role and then over time you know as, as he gains more confidence gains more minutes and we get a better feel of him and how he can help our team you know we'll continue to evaluate you know rotations as needed just from a roster fit standpoint and you know this question may be a bit premature but uh, how do you envision uh, Porter fitting in with these guys I mean obviously 611 played center at uh, Mizzou but he could shoot he could pass um have you been able to evaluate his, his skill set and how do you see him fitting amongst uh, sort of where the roster's at right now? Yeah, I mean, evaluation from afar for sure, um, but no better, you know, evaluation than when we get him, you know, fully healthy and in the fold and, you know, the chemistry is going to be big, you know, um, but I have faith in the IQ, obviously all the work that, you know, Zach and his group have done, you know, the, the little bit that I've watched as well, just seeing his feel for the game is going to fit great with our group. Um, great competitor, um, you know, great person. So uh, I think uh, the chemistry with his teammates is going to be an easy transition for him. Is he a four? Is he a five? You know, in our style of play, it's pretty interchangeable. Um, but the fact that he's a playmaker, um, a guy that can stretch the floor and shoot the three, it's going to be big for us. Obviously, you know, uh, an important piece to our offense. Um, but, you know, he has all the traits that we, you know, want in guys when we bring him into the fold. So uh, once we get him on the court and have a better evaluation, we'll know exactly how to deploy him. Um, but, you know, we're still early in the process for sure. <coughs> You talked about the team's depth being such a, a – you always talk about the team's depth being important, but being in the same position with the four-game lead that you were at the start of the, the end of the All-Star break, what does it say about how well this team has played, minus Jaron, minus BC, and just kind of how they've been able to really – not just come together, but play almost even better in some ways. Yeah, I mean, we've been very reliant on our depth. Um, you know, hopefully it's been a, a great developmental opportunity for so many different guys, guys that have been in the rotation at, you know, high minutes and guys that maybe hadn't been in the rotation. Um, you know, that's kind of what we're built on is everyone's working every single day when they get their opportunity. So obviously we've missed those guys, um, you know, JJ, BC, and obviously, you know, Justice as well. Um, but, you know, hopefully getting them back, you know, soon, you know, uh, to those guys when the next week and then BC at some point before the end of the season, that's going to be a huge boost. But the fact that we've relied on our depth all season long, especially as it's been tested over the last couple of weeks, um, it just talks to the resiliency of the group, the togetherness of this group, the competitiveness of this group that, you know, we all know what our job is to go out there and just compete and play together uh, no matter who's on the floor. As we talk about, we're not just relying on one or two guys. Um, you know, that's how we're built, and it's a credit to all those guys, you know, taking on that mentality. Thanks, everyone.